Hello everyone, welcome to today's video, which is something very different from the content I normally put out. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Risa, and the content I normally put out revolves around beauty, fashion, and lifestyle for people over 40. But every once in a while, I do like to throw out something new and different onto my channel into the YouTube universe. So today, I'm going to be telling you all about mine and my family's experience on the Virgin Voyages Valiant Lady. We just got off the boat and flew back from Miami on Sunday. I am filming this on a Wednesday. I wanted to do it as soon as possible so everything was fresh in my mind. So if you have ever been interested in going on a Virgin Voyages cruise, this was, by the way, the New Year's Ahoy cruise. So it started on December 30th and then was eight nights. It stopped in Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic. It stopped in San Juan, Puerto Rico. It stopped in St. Croix and also the island of Bimini in the Bahamas. Virgin has a very, very nice exclusive beach club on Bimini. So with me on this cruise was my husband, my two kids ages 19 and 22, my sister and her husband, and her three kids ages 19, 22, and 24. One of my cousins who is 19 also joined us and then we also had some friends on the ship. Two couples, one of them has kids who are also 19 and 22. So we had a lot of young people with us. By the way, if you did not know this already, it's pretty important to note, Virgin Voyages is adults only, 18 plus. So you will not find any children, toddlers, babies on this cruise line at all. And that, I believe, is one of the biggest draws towards Virgin Voyages for a lot of people. I have been on cruises in the past. This was my first adults-only cruise. I have been on several cruises in the past. I'm not someone who cruises all the time. I've maybe been on 10 cruises my entire life versus people who go on five, 10 cruises a year. And because my kids are older and I'm just not in that world of parenting young children anymore, that really appealed to me. Although I can't say that when I was on those other cruises, the non-adults only cruises, that I was really bothered too much by young kids. Now, of course, a lot of what I'm going to say in this video is just my opinion. Not everything I'm going to talk about in regards to this cruise is going to be positive. I felt like there were a lot of pros and cons of, with this cruise, with this specific ship and with this cruise line. And one of those things, you know, definitely could be kids versus no kids. I would say, having done both now, that it's not a huge um, difference to me personally. What was nice, though, is that I was able to go to the arcade, which was very cool, by the way. It had a lot of 80s video games, and they played 80s music, and it was just really fun to be in there with my now-grown children playing Pac-Man and Space Invaders. And obviously, if you were on a ship with children, there most likely would not be nearly as much opportunity for adults to go and play these games. Which brings me to something else I think is important to tell you about this cruise. I would call it a very much, at least the sailing was, very much a Gen X, which is me, and millennial cruise. I really did not see many people over the age of 55, 60. Of course, there were some, but overall, I just felt like the age range was mostly 30 to 55. I definitely feel like if my, you know, 19 and 22 year old kids and nephews and niece didn't have each other, they probably would not have had nearly as much fun because there just wasn't a lot of, even though it was a Christmas time, New Year's holiday cruise, there just weren't a lot of late teens and early 20 somethings on this ship. They did find one group of 20 somethings that were also traveling with their parents on the cruise. I actually think my husband looked up the median age of Virgin Voyages, and it was people, I think, around 45 to 50 years old. And that's exactly where my husband and I fall. I'm 50, my husband is 52, my sister is a couple years older, our friends are around the same age. So yeah, very much a Gen X millennial cruise. Let me tell you about the booking. I booked through a travel agent. I do highly recommend using a travel agent. There is no 
fee to use a travel agent. I personally love having somebody to call or email or text who will handle any questions I have. They'll be the ones on the phone to Virgin Voyages if you have issues, which we did a couple of times, not during the cruise, but before. A lot of them are also Virgin Voyages specialists, so they know what cabins are best, they know how much you know sailor loot you should have or bar tab, they just know a lot. And if you have no idea what those things are, I'm going to explain them to you. But I just personally really like using a travel agent. She was very helpful to me. It just feels like a little bit of a security blanket to have that as well as she secured our insurance. We did not buy insurance through the cruise line. We bought it through Alliance, which we always do when we travel. Last year around the same time, my family traveled to Paris and London and we also took out insurance. And this insurance policy through Alliance included, say we needed to be airlifted off the ship. It included all of that in addition to what I already had by booking with a credit card that offers trip protection, luggage protection, airfare protection, all of that stuff. I used my Chase Sapphire preferred card for that. Now, because I booked through a travel agent, I don't really know, I can't say how the booking process through Virgin directly would work. I can just tell you that I was given through my travel agent $600 per cabin in bar tab. So my husband and I had a cabin and we had $600 in bar tab, which could be used for, well, alcoholic drinks or um, non-alcoholic drinks that there were a charge for. Everything else is included in the price of the cabin, meaning all of your food and soft drinks and if you wanna go get ice cream or if you wanna go get a hot dog, those kind of things are free of charge, but alcoholic beverages and certain meals or certain wines at certain bars and restaurants are extra charges. Now those can come off of something called sailor loot. So that is separate. So we had $600 bar tab for that for our cabin, a $600 bar tab for my son's cabin. My younger son, he rarely, if ever, drinks. And my husband doesn't drink much, so $1,200 in bar tab was more than enough for us. We actually got off the ship having not used $115 of our bar tab. And that's even after we had bought a round of drinks for the family the night before. We had just we tried to use it up, but we just didn't. And part of that was because we did have a bar in our cabin, my husband and I, because we had what's called a rock star suite. And I'm gonna talk about the suites, the cabins momentarily. But let me finish with the uh, Sailor Loop and the bar tab, which are things that are offers through Virgin Voyages, but you can also get through your travel agent. They have these types of ways that they can give this to you. With Sailor Loot, you can use that for anything you wanna buy in the shops. I ended up needing to purchase some flip-flops and I got some Javianas for $20 at the one of the shops and it just came right off my Sailor Loot. You can also use Sailor Loot to pay for excursions. However, you cannot use it to pay for excursions until you are on the ship. So my sister, booked an excursion for her kids before we got on the ship. I did not book it until we were on the ship and my sailor loot had loaded. So I did have to pay $10 more per person for some reason for my two kids, but it was able to come out of my sailor loot versus having to pay for it separately. She had to get that fixed once we realized that on board that that's what happened, she tried to get it fixed so it would come out of her sailor loot and not be charged to her credit card. The risk with doing that is there is a possibility that you won't get the excursions that you want if you wait to get on board and use your sailor loot. Even with the excursion my boys were doing with my nephews, when I first booked it, they were at a different time slot than each other and because we had the perks of being um, rock stars. My husband and I and my sister and her husband were quote unquote rock stars. So we had a designated rock star agent who helped us with these things. And having that designated rock star agent to kind of help you out, get you into some sold out shows, that kind of thing, is one of the perks of spending more money for a rock star or mega rock star suite. And I think I just said a little bit more money, but it's a lot more money. We used all of our sailor loot and that included the $175 I paid for premium Wi-Fi, which was not 
necessary. It was not worth it. In fact, the first night we were on the ship, I was taking video at the party that was on the deck as we were pulling out of the port of Miami, and my kids were taking video and everybody in our group was taking video and posting it on their Instagram stories. And their stories were posting within a couple of minutes. My stories were taking forever. So what I ended up doing, being that we were still so close to the port of Miami, is I just took it off of their Wi-Fi and used my data, my cellular data. Because when you're on the ship, you have to have it in airplane mode and then you link to their Wi-Fi. And they say that if you want to do streaming or if you want to you know, watch YouTube videos or things like that, you should have the enhanced Wi-Fi for $175. So I bought it because my job is social media. My job requires me to post on social media and you know, check my YouTube comments and videos and things like that. But in talking to everyone else in my group who did not pay for the enhanced Wi-Fi, it really wasn't worth it. But I will say this, the Wi-Fi did improve a little bit more into the cruise. The first day, the first evening, it was a disaster, even when I put it back onto the ship's Wi-Fi, enhanced Wi-Fi. But by the next day, it was working a lot better. So speaking of, you know, internet and phones and all of that, you have got to download the Virgin Voyages app. As soon as you book, you're probably going to want to download the app. There is a reason, though, that this app only has, I think, one star on the App Store because it is horrible. It is so, so bad. It's worse before you're sailing than once you're on the ship. It gets a lot better once you're on the ship, which is good because you need that to access pretty much everything. That is how you book your dining. That is how you book your shows, your excursions. If you wanna see how much of a bar tab you have left, where it's being spent, everything is through the app. But as I was saying, prior to sailing, the app was constantly glitching. I kept trying to add my kids as mates and the email, the text would get sent to them. They would accept it and then it would never show up in the app as them being my mates. And we tried this several times. That was one of the first times that my travel agent had to call for me and make sure that we were all connected. Because if you wanna make reservations for someone else, if you wanna make a dinner reservation for four, you have to, the system has to know that you're traveling with those people. And prior to your cruise, you're also going to download all of your information onto the app as far as your passport information, you're gonna take a picture, you're going to put in credit card information that they can charge if you go over you know, your allotted bar tab or sailor loot. And then there is an area that you can click someone else is footing the bill for me. And that's another area where we had problems. Every time my boys would try to check you know, someone else is footing the bill for me, there was never like a follow-up. I never got an email saying, you know, do you okay footing the bill for this cabin? It just wasn't connecting. So that's another time that my travel agent called Virgin Voyages and had us all linked together. It is important if you want to share your sailor loot, even if it's just with one other person in your cabin, you have to make sure that they are connected because in my niece and my cousin's cabin, they were not connected. So only one person, by the way, you have a band that you used to open up your door, you used to pay for your drinks, and you wear it the entire time. And what was happening is it was only coming off of one person's bar tab. And then the other person in the cabin, because they weren't connected, they were just being charged. So that $600 that they had on their room, only one of the girls was actually, it was actually coming off the bar tab. But then when my cousin was charging her drinks, it was coming off the credit card and not the bar tab, hopefully that's making sense. So eventually my sister was able to talk to our rockstar agent, Kimberly, she was amazing, and she was able to get that fixed. So you do wanna make sure everything is linked. So if it's just you and your spouse, significant other, whoever, and you want to be sharing the responsibility of you know having that sailor loop be used and just any charges, make sure that you're all linked. The only downside was that I was the only one for some reason that could see the charges. As soon as everybody was linked, if one of my boys or my husband went onto the app and tried to see like where they were at or where they were spending, they couldn't see it. Only I could see it. And I could see it would, you could sort it by sailors. You can see what everybody was purchasing. What I didn't like is that it didn't have like a grand total. It told you what you had left remaining, but it didn't tell you like 
how much you spent that day. You'd have to calculate it yourself. I guess for some people that wouldn't matter. People are really good with math. I'm just not. So I like to see like, well, how much did I spend this day or how much did I spend this day? Just, just so I could see like, oh, are we going to have enough by the time the end of this cruise comes around? And I don't know. I just felt like that was something that they could have done better. There are a lot of things on the app that could be improved. So that is why it has one star. But you need the app. You need to have the bracelet. Again, that's how you get into your cabin and how you pay for everything. They will scan your bracelet anytime you order a drink. And so now let's talk about the cabin categories so you understand if you're not familiar what I'm talking about when I say we were rock stars. So on Virgin Voyages, you can get an insider cabin, which is your typical cabin that you think of on cruises with without a balcony or even a porthole. It's just an insider. I call it like a closet. It's just a bed or two beds. There's a solo insider for one person. The next step up from that would be what my what my sons had, which was a sea view, which means they had a porthole so they could at least see the water and get a little sunlight into their room. And then there is a sea terrace, which is, again, a standard, very, very nice cabin. I was able to kind of peek into those as we were disembarking the ship, I was able to look in and see the um, sea terrace cabins. Those looked very nice. And of course they have a terrace. And on every terrace, I believe on every terrace, there is a red hammock, a signature Virgin Voyages red hammock. And something I found out through comments in the Facebook group that I joined, some of the sea terrace cabins have glass, like my cabin had, but some of them have, um, you know, they're not glass, they're not where you can see through. So that's, I guess, called an obstructed view. And then I think there's a Sea Terrace XL, which is a little bit larger. You can see pictures and videos of all of these cabins online. That is how I first saw the Brilliant Suite. So my sister and her husband were celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. So they decided to splurge on the Brilliant Suite, which is in the Rockstar category. And when I saw the room she was getting, I went on YouTube and I looked at it. I saw the tour and I told my husband, I want that. I want that suite too. So I contacted my travel agent and they were selling out quickly. Even though these are much pricier, I would say that the price of our cabin was three times the price of our kids' cabin. But they didn't care. It's not like I'm putting my kids, you know, oh, how could you stay in such a nice room and like have your kids in this little closet. Well, they honestly, they didn't care. None of our kids cared. They were just so happy that they were going with us on the trip. So the Brilliant Suite is in the Rockstar category. There are a couple of other suites, I believe, that fall into the Rockstar category. And then there is a couple of suites, there are a couple of suites that are even bigger for the mega Rockstars. So the differences besides the bigger room if you are a rock star, you also have, as I mentioned earlier, a rock star agent, a designated person to help you with your needs. If you run into a problem with one of your dinner reservations, if you run into a problem where you didn't book a show but you wanna to go to a show, she can try to get you in. She also will um, swap out things in your bar. If you are a rock star or a mega rock star, you will have a bar in your room. So here's our bar. And you can also switch out bottles. We didn't want the bottle of gin, so we asked for another bottle of Belvedere. So we swapped that out for another bottle of tequila. A couple other perks of being a rock star are that you can board separately. You can also disembark quicker than everybody else. There is a place called Richard's Rooftop that only rock stars and mega rock stars can access. I wasn't sure if I was going to really use that space very much because from what I had read, it's very, very quiet up there. There's no pool up there. There's no music up there, which is wrong. There's no live music, but they do have some you know, nice music playing. And I discovered that I really, really did like it up there because the sea days, on the sea days, the pool deck got you know extremely busy and I sit in the shade anyway. So I would go up to Richard's rooftop and they have these really nice um, day bed type of things, circular day beds. They had two hot tubs up there. They have bartenders that are excellent that really you know get to know you, they know what you like. And then at five o'clock every single day, they bring out the champagne and they will refill your glass as much as you'd like. If you're in the hot tub, they will bring it to you in the hot tub. I honestly really enjoyed having access to Richard's rooftop. 
The bummer is that you can't have any of your non-Rockstar family members or friends come up there. We knew some people that tried and they got kicked out because they will ask to see the wristbands for rock stars were black on my cruise and everybody else had red. So they also might ask you for your cabin number. So that's just a bummer because you also cannot pay. From what I understand on some other cruise lines, my sister and brother-in-law and their family had been on a celebrity cruise a couple years earlier and they had a suite on that ship, but apparently they were able to purchase access to suite privileges so that they could all be together in these type of separate spaces. But Virgin Voyages does not allow that. So it wasn't a huge deal because my sister and brother-in-law were also rock stars, so they could be up there with us. It was just you know, our kids couldn't be up there with us, but it was fine. They did their own thing most of the time. I mean, let me be honest. They were asleep until like two, three in the afternoon. They would go to bed at three, four in the morning and they'd sleep until noon, one, two, even three in the afternoon. If it was a sea day and not a port day, because obviously we wanted to get off the ship and, you know, walk around the ports. But anyway, let me get back to the cabin, our cabin. I overall, when I walked in, loved it. I thought, this is really cool. This is a really, really cool looking cabin. I love the space, I love the bathroom. What I didn't love, and I think that they should have done, was have the Rockstar agent or housekeeping, the, the steward, um, come in and do a tour of the room, meaning show us where all of the storage is. Because we, my husband and I, we're relatively smart people, we could not find a lot of the storage. We found the storage on one side of the bed for the luggage, but it wasn't until like day three or four and my sister and brother-in-law had the same thing that we discovered that built into the furniture, like right in front of the bar, were three drawers. Two of them, pretty deep drawers, deeper than any of the others around the room, which was frustrating because they were all like so shallow, but there were two deep drawers built into the furniture that we just never thought were drawers. And then the third one had all the different glassware. Up at the bar, on the bar, you could see the shaker and the stir and all those kind of bar tools. But the glassware, there were two glasses up on the bar, but there were martini glasses and coupe glasses and other types of glasses in that drawer that we didn't discover for several days in because we just didn't know about them. My biggest problem with this cabin was the fact that it had no long hanging space in the closet. There was zero place to hang anything that was long. There was a place to hang long items in my kids' sea view cabin, and I noticed that there was long hanging storage in the sea terrace cabin I peeked into, but none in this big cabin. Everyone else has this long area for long dresses. When I go on a cruise, I bring a lot of clothing. I bring a lot of dresses, and a lot of them are long. They go down to the floor, and I had to fold everything up and it's not a huge deal, it's not the end of the world, but it does cause more wrinkling and you can't bring a steamer on the ship. You have to ask them for it, which I did. But then also when I got the steamer, I had like nowhere to hang up the dresses to steam them. I did finally use the hook in the bathroom, but it was kind of not, anyway, it's hard to explain, but I just couldn't believe that they didn't have any hanging space in the closet. I did happen to mention it to Kimberly, our Rockstar agent, and not that she could do anything about it, but she said that what a lot of people do is they buy magnetic hooks, but I told my sister that, and she said she brought a magnetic hook, and it just slid right off the wall, so I don't know if she got the wrong kind, or I don't know, but that was just a little frustrating, because I like to leave my long hanging clothes hanging, but just thought I'd point it out. Um, okay, let's talk about the food on the cruise. Now, but as you know, everybody's taste in food is different. Everybody likes different things when it comes to food and entertainment and all that. So the food on the ship, there's no main dining room. Like in all the other cruises I have ever been on, there has been one main dining room where you could do an early seating or a late seating and you got to know your waiter and the wait staff. And back when I used to cruise with my parents in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, we had a designated table as well. When I cruised, I think in 2019, there was a dining room, but we sat at a different table every night. So on Virgin Voyages, you do have to make dining reservations and you can book your dining reservations. I think it's 60 days out from your cruise if you are a non-rock star. I think rock stars get two weeks more 
get access to book everything two weeks or three weeks earlier, I can't remember. My sister's travel agent had actually originally done all the bookings for us because it's not that easy to maneuver everything when you have a large group of people in a bunch of different cabins, but somehow it worked. We had reservations every single night. Um, we really, really enjoyed all of the restaurants, some better than others. Our favorites were the Italian restaurant, Extra Virgin, and then we also really liked Pink Agave, which is the Mexican restaurant. We were sort of eh on Razzle Dazzle. It was fine. We really enjoyed the wake. I had a steak there every time I went, which was three times. We originally were only going to go twice, but we passed on Test Kitchen. Now, Test Kitchen, people either love, 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 think it's the best thing ever, or they hate it. Test Kitchen is supposed to be Virgin Voyage's idea of a restaurant for foodies, for someone who is interested in, you know, Michelin star restaurants. Small portions, but very unique dishes. Like they had asparagus ice cream, asparagus sorbet. And they have two different menus. There's an A menu and a B menu. One is venison and something else. And I, I can't remember, the other one was salmon. The friends that we knew who were on the cruise, they basically gave us the scoop on Test Kitchen. And they know me and they know my kids. I mean, I'll be blunt, we're just not foodies, especially my boys. Give them a steak and some potatoes or even you know some chicken fingers. <laughs> they would much rather have that than a small bite of something you know, really fancy and unique and the word I wanna use isn't coming to me, but I think you understand what I'm saying. So once I heard about that, I knew that, especially my youngest, was not going to like it. So I canceled that reservation or told my sister that we weren't gonna be going to that and were able to have Kimberly get us a reservation at the wake, but she couldn't get us one until 9 p.m. Their dinner was like at 6.30, and from what I understand, what I understood at the time was that it can be a two, two and a half hour dinner at Test Kitchen, especially if you do the wine pairing or the cocktail pairing, because that's our friends said that it was like a three, three and a half hour dinner. Theirs ended up being, because my sister and brother-in-law and their kids still went, as well as my older son. He wanted to at least check it out. So he went and um, their dinner was about two hours. My son came to the wake where I was eating with my husband and my younger son and was like, yeah, that wasn't for me. I'm starving. I need to order with you guys. So thankfully, even though our reservation was at 9 p.m., we went early and were able to get in early. And then they sat us in an area that they could kind of squeeze in. We could squeeze in the fourth person. So he ended up eating another dinner after that dinner because he was still starving. And then the other restaurant we didn't eat at was Gumbe, which is, I think, Korean barbecue. And I was a little bit bummed about that, but it's not a big deal. Um, the reason why we didn't make a reservation there is because my nephew has a severe allergy to uh, sesame, sesame seeds, anything with sesame. So by the way, they were very, very good about asking for food, about food allergies every single time we sat down at a table. That was the second thing they said. First, they introduced themselves, said, you know, welcome everybody, I'm gonna be your server. Does anyone at the table have any dietary restrictions or allergies? Every single time, without fail. So we, we always said, you know, that my nephew has um, sesame allergy, and so my sister felt like, for some reason, that restaurant in particular just worried her, so yeah, we just never made a reservation there, but. Maybe if I go on another Virgin Cruise, I will check out Gumbe because people say it's very, very good. But I felt overall that the food was, you know, great. I was not a huge fan of the breakfast that I would get brought to my room. Oh, that's another thing that you get when you are at the Rockstar level. They have something called Ship Eats, which there is a delivery fee if you're not a rock star, but I think, for, again, from what I've read on the Facebook page, which is very helpful, by the way, there's some misinformation there, but Overall, it is pretty helpful if, to join. So people were saying that if you are not a rock star and you order Ship Eats, if you order like one paid for item, meaning like there's a charge for a special juice, you won't have to pay a delivery fee. But if you are rock star or mega rock star, it's free. You can order Ship Eats whenever you want. There's no extra charges. So my husband and I would have, um, well, the first or second morning we would go to the place called the galley, which was one floor above us. We were on floor 14. And the galley is kind of like a food court. So you just go up to the different stations and you ask for what you want and you take it and you sit down. There's plenty of space, indoor and outdoor, to eat. 
they had, you know, all different kinds of, um, you know, sodas and juices and pastries, just a lot of options. And if you wanted to, you could actually order from, you could just sit down and order. Something else I heard is that up until recently, you could only order from your table. You had to sit down and then order from any of the places that were there and they would bring it to your table. On our cruise, you just, it seemed encouraged that you just go up and ask for what you wanted. Like, I want a panini or I want an omelet. I really, well, not just me, but me and my sons were really, really loved the ramen place. The ramen was excellent, the spicy ramen. Okay, so getting back to the breakfast we had delivered. We would have, you could get on the app and schedule a time to have what you wanted delivered to your stateroom. And so we would get coffee. I got scrambled eggs and my husband, I think, got egg whites and we had some fruit. But the eggs were always runny every single time. And even when I went into the galley the first couple of days, I don't know why I kept trying. They were so, so runny. And salt was hard to come by, salt and pepper. They did have it on the tables at some restaurants, but other times, like, it just seemed very difficult to find for some reason. They didn't even bring it when they brought, you know, the breakfast in the morning. So, minor, but um, I remembered, you know, to do certain things, which was to get some salt when I was up at the galley and bring it down to my room. I will say it was very convenient being one floor below the galley because if I needed to run up and get anything, like if I wanted, if I took one of the um, to-go sushis to my room and I forgot soy sauce, I could just run upstairs and get it. And because we were at the more mid-forward part of the ship, we were also very, very close to Richard's rooftop. All I had to do was walk up two flights of stairs and I could access Richard's rooftop. So that was convenient. But what I didn't like and what I was afraid of, um, you're going to get different opinions on this as well. People say that the 14th floor is one of the noisiest because it is under the galley. And you can hear at 7.30 every morning, we did hear chairs moving around or just things noises at 7.30 every single morning. So that was a little frustrating. And then I guess at the back of the ship, that's under an area called the Red Room, which is the showroom. And apparently if you're in one of those cabins, you can hear the performers rehearsing. And I would say that it's not ideal to be on the 14th floor except with the exception of the fact that it is so close to the galley and a lot of other things. I felt like the location was good overall. And again, I loved my cabin, but I just wish that it had been a little bit quieter. Um, one night, someone in a cabin near us was just, you know, partying till five in the morning and, but it is what it is. I recommend bringing some earplugs, basically on any trip you go on. Take some noise canceling headphones or some earplugs. Speaking of things to bring, I brought everything under the sun as far as cold medicine, uh, anti-nausea medication, anything for an upset stomach, just bring it all. Okay, when it comes to entertainment, we were not a huge fan of the entertainment on board. Um, I will say that I may not have given it a fair enough chance. We went to one show the first night and I don't consider myself to be prude. I don't consider myself to be like, super politically correct. I'm not like, I'm fine with a lot of things. Um, and I was fine with the raunchiness of the show. I'm fine with raunchy shows. I live in Las Vegas. One of my favorite shows to tell people to come see is Absinthe. It is the most unpolitically correct, raunchy, but hilarious show you can see in Vegas. But if you are uptight at all or ultra conservative, you would probably hate it. And you would probably hate the show that we saw the first night. I don't even remember what it was called. I apologize for that. But our friends loved it. My husband and I left after 15 minutes. We were just like, this is not a really good show. And I think it's because maybe we live in Las Vegas and we're just used to like big elaborate productions. And also on previous cruises we had been on, we had seen some really, really excellent Vegas style shows. So this was not that. So being that we had some old school ways of cruising in our head, of course we were gonna make some comparisons and talk about things that, oh, we wish were the same as old school cruising and what we like better about this new way of cruising. Um, so the shows just, I don't know, none of them really appealed to me, so I didn't go to any after that. My sister and brother-in-law and their children went to another show 
um, later in the week that they really liked. It was kind of like a Cirque show, uh, apparently, but they said, oh, you guys would not have been impressed with this because you've, you've seen so many, like, over-the-top amazing Vegas shows. So, yeah, I did like the, um, one of the bands that we would see a lot every time they played, which was every night of the cruise, this band called the AC Power Unit. I loved them. They played music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They played songs that almost everybody knew, except at one point they started singing the Violent Femmes that my sister and I and my husband, because we were, we're all Gen Xers, we knew every word to that song. And we were just scream, singing it at the top of our lungs and a lot of other people, even though I said it was a Gen X Millennial Cruise, I don't know, maybe they just didn't listen to good music, but they did not know the song. But this band did and they were definitely millennials. Now that I think about it, they could have been older Gen Z. I don't know their ages, but they were, you know, they were young enough to think that they wouldn't know the Violent Femmes, but I really enjoyed their music. We loved sitting there and watching them and, you know, having some drinks. The only issue I found, and again, this is based on having cruised on other cruise lines before, back in the day, just what I'm used to, I felt like the venues were almost too small because if you wanted to see these bands perform in the main, I think it was called the, um, I wanna say Rocks Lounge, but that's just because I'm thinking of Red Rock Casino we have here in town. Um, but I think it was called On the Rocks. So it's on deck six, there's a huge main staircase from when you first come onto the ship. It's kind of like that main midship area with a bar and there's just not enough seating. So if you want to watch a band and actually sit down, you have to get to that area at least a half an hour to 45 minutes before they start. Otherwise, it's gonna, you'll, you'll be hard pressed to find a seat. I would say that their venues could be a little bit bigger. Same thing with the show. You had to book in advance. Sometimes they sold out. Sometimes you could get in like my sister and her family did um, at the last minute because people don't show up. They decide they don't wanna go to the show. But even when we were in that red room the first night, my husband and I looked around and thought, this is much smaller than what we're used to on other cruise ships, like big showrooms. So um, yeah, I also felt like as far as other spaces, like bars and things like that, excellent. Um, it did take a while to get drinks sometimes, especially at the Sip Lounge, which we loved, which is the um, Champagne Lounge, really nice area. But it would sometimes take 15 minutes for a drink to come, 20 minutes. So even if you went up to the bar, it would often take a while. Um, then the drinks overall were all very good, very strong and, and inexpensive, in my opinion, because Again, I think this is the third time I'm saying this. I live in Las Vegas, so if you go to a drink, if you go to get a drink at a nice lounge here in Vegas, you're likely paying 18, 20, 24, 26 dollars for a cocktail here at a nice place. So the cocktails on this ship, I would say the ones that we had averaged maybe 12, 13 dollars a drink, which I don't think is bad. So yeah, overall, I think we all thought that the drinks were pretty good, the food was really good. Um, obviously a few exceptions here and there, not everything was like, oh my God, amazing, but a lot of it was. We were really happy. We really didn't have any complaints about the food or drinks. Um, I think I mentioned early on in this video that I we really loved the arcade. I loved playing video games with my son and it all kind of started coming back to me, my expertise at Pac-Man. He still beat me, but um, I have some issues with my hand and carpal tunnel, so I'm going to use that as an excuse as to why I didn't beat him in Pac-Man, but I did beat him in Ultimate Street Fighter. Let's talk about the pool area, which was my only other kind of complaint, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to just kind of close out with some final thoughts and look at my notes and see if I missed anything, because I know I've just been talking, 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 talking. So the pool, way too small. Way, way, way too small, especially for the amount of people on the ship. It's teeny tiny. And if you are not out there, I think this is like a lot of cruise ships. If you're not out there early, you're not going to get a place to sit. I wanted to sit in the shade. So my husband and I got out there at like 10 a.m. And there was an area, and this was on a sea day. We found like a little booth area that we could, you know, lay down on in the shade. And then the second sea day, there was one point in the cruise where we had two sea days in a row. And on the second one, we found another area called um, the dock, the dock house. There's, it's a bar and there's, it's a place to eat. And then out there is just some nice day beds with umbrellas. So we really liked that location for the second day because if you're not sitting in the sun, you don't really need to go into the pool anyway. 
I mean, I don't know, some people do. There was something else that looked like a pool near the main pool, but it's like a big hot tub, I guess. They call it the world's, one of the world's largest hot tubs. But when I'm hot and sweaty, I don't wanna go into a hot tub. That's just me. I did go into the hot tub up at Richard's rooftop, but it was kind of like more in the evenings when the breeze would pick up. And I don't know, I still don't love going in a hot tub when it's super hot. But the point is that the pool is tiny. It is the tiniest pool I have ever seen on a cruise ship. And there's only that one. All right, so let me close this out with a few final thoughts. I talked about the food. I talked about the service, entertainment, um, small venues. Oh, lack of restrooms. Oh, that was really, really frustrating. The first night we ate at Extra Virgin, I walked out, I saw the men's room and I thought surely the women's room is close by, but no, you have to walk around the entirety of the ship. I actually called my husband and said, I, I'm lost. It was the first night. I said, I don't know how to get back to the restaurant. I'm like in front of this shop, you know? So bathrooms, everybody in our group said that bathrooms were extremely hard to find. And when you did find one, it was either an all gender bathroom, which locked, I'm going like this because you had to wave your hand over it to unlock it. And then once you're inside, you had to lock it that way, but they didn't really seem to lock. So many people had doors open up on them. So I tried to avoid the all gender bathrooms. And um, basically most of the time I just went to my cabin because it was pretty centrally located. However, there were a couple of times that we, you know, we had to use the bathrooms and there's maybe like two or three stalls in each bathroom. Anyway, the consensus is the ship needs more bathrooms. Oh, the in-room tablet. Yes, in your room, and I don't know if this is all rock stars. I should ask my kids. I should have asked my kids before I started filming if they had one in their room. In our room, we had a tablet that controlled everything. If I wanted to, if we wanted to turn off all the lights, you just hit a button and all the lights would go off. The curtains would electronically open and close. They also had mood lighting, which was kind of funny. And then if you wanted to watch TV, like everything could be accessed from that tablet. We never watched TV. Oh, the outlets. The outlets are plentiful. I had no problem um, using any of my um, hair tools. They have both US and European outlets. Uh, the shopping on board, it's okay. They have some, an area called High Street where they have um, resale uh, like Chanel and Louis Vuitton. They have an area to buy you know, some snacks, some Virgin Voyages merchandise, um, men's swimsuits, men's shirts, women's cover-ups, jewelry, of course. They had uh, some makeup brands there. They had some long comb, perfume, of course. They had a few benefit products, nude sticks. Oh, they had Caudalie skincare, some Clinique skincare. They had some Victoria's Secret stuff there, like body lotions and body mists and stuff. So I wasn't wowed by the selection, but it wasn't horrible either. Oh, the soda fountain. We love the soda fountain. You could get ice cream floats. You could get the floats with alcohol in them. Mine was just vanilla ice cream, Diet Coke, caramel, and raspberry. It was kind of like your, their take on the old school, like 50s diner. You could get a pretzel, you could get a hot dog. It was near the arcade where they also had air hockey. They also had an area with just a bunch of board games that you could sit down and play. And in that area, they also did trivia every day, every night. There was a lot of things on board that we did not take advantage of. And I'm just being honest with you. There were some um, classes, like exercise classes, bungee classes that I would have liked to participate in, but I have some back issues and some other like aches and pains. So I really didn't do any exercising, but my kids used the gym, they liked it. I did not use the spa, so I can't speak to that. Um, I think the last thing I'm gonna touch on is the beach club at Bimini which I think if you're going to the Caribbean, all Virgin Voyages ships will stop there. The Beach Club is beautiful. We unfortunately didn't have the best weather. It was kind of cool, it was overcast. I think it would have been more fun had the weather been better, but the water was gorgeous. It was absolutely stunning. Um, and the vibes were just, you know, party vibes. I think it would have been more party vibes if again, the weather had been nicer and more people wanted to participate because I was I was cold. I was sitting with like a towel wrapped around me. Oh, and by the way, there is a separate rock star area as well at the beach club. There's also a special rock star tram or golf cart that will take you to the beach club. Otherwise you go in just the regular long kind of tram that takes a bunch of people. And then it also picks you up. Some people rented golf carts to go around the island. Um, some people went to the little shopping area. The beach club, I really liked it. And again, the water was just stunning. And that reminds me, in St. Croix, 
my husband and I went to a beach. We actually walked a mile to this place called Rainbow Beach, which you could rent chairs and you know get you know some stuff to drink and some food. The rest of my family went on a, um, a snorkeling day, booked third party. They did not book that through the cruise. I think it was called Big Beards Adventures. My husband and I tend to get seasick on little boats, especially my husband. And so we just felt like we didn't want to risk, um, you know, getting seasick on that small boat. So we just let them go and we went to the beach ourselves. But St. Croix was also beautiful. They had beautiful weather wherever they were on their boat and snorkeling from the photos I saw and from what they told me, it looked, you know, sunny and beautiful. We, the beach we were at, had a big black cloud over it the entire time. But again, you're on vacation. How bad could it be? You just have to like roll with it. And you know, when those thoughts would come into my brain, like, oh, I wish it was sunnier, I would think, stop. It's not that big of a deal. You live somewhere where it's sunny all the time and just try to make the best of it. Enjoy. Drink some more rum, which is what I did. A couple of things I did forget to mention, as far as clothing, during the day I just wore a swimsuit with a cover-up, or a t-shirt and shorts, or a long flowy casual maxi dress during the day, but I did dress up at night, and I do have a YouTube short you can check out of every outfit every night that I wore. The nightclub on the ship is called The Manor. I did go a couple of nights, New Year's Eve and Scarlet Night, and I think one other night, and the DJ was great. I had so much fun dancing with my family. Scarlet Night is also so much fun. That is the night that everyone wears red. It's out on the pool deck. Many people did get into the pool at the end of the evening. I did not, but the deck does get quite wet and the bottom of my dress did get wet, but that's probably because I was wearing flats. You may want to choose comfortable shoes because you're going to do a lot of dancing. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave them for me in the comments. I will try to answer as many as I can. If you did enjoy this video and found it helpful at all, I would appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. And if you are someone who wants to hear from a former professional makeup artist about makeup and other beauty tips and product reviews and tutorials and all of that, I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you in what I call the Risa Does Makeup family. So yeah, that'll do it for this review of the Virgin Voyages New Year's Ahoy cruise that I just took. And I thank you all so much for watching.